Hi everybody, so in today's video I'm going to be going through Unit 1, Lesson 1 Notes, which is a review of piecewise functions. We have two learning targets for today, and that is I can graph a piecewise function and I can evaluate function values using a given piecewise function or using the graph of a piecewise function. So what we're going to start by doing is reviewing how to create the graph of a piecewise function. Suppose that you were asked to graph the following function, f of x. As a reminder, this function is called piecewise because the, the function is defined in two pieces. What this part over here tells us is the domain of each of the pieces. So this tells us to use the equation 2x for all of the x values that are less than or equal to 2. And it tells us to use the equation 4x minus 4 for all of the x values that are greater than 2. Now, there are some things you should do before you start graphing, and these are things that I think about in my mind, but we're going to write them down just to make sure we've solidified that understanding. The first idea is how many pieces should this graph have? Based on this equation, it looks to me like there should be two pieces. The first piece of this graph should be given to us by the top part of the equation, and the second part of this graph should be given to us by the bottom part of the equation. So to answer this question, how many pieces should this graph have? I would say that this graph should have two pieces. Now the next thing you should always consider is where is the breaking point? Now when I say breaking point, that means where does one piece end and the next one begin? So when I'm saying where is the breaking point, we need to refer to the x values in the domain. Based on this domain, because this part of the domain is when x is less than or equal to 2, and this is for when x is greater than 2, the breaking point should be at the place on the graph where x is equal to 2. That's where one part of the equation stops and the second part of the equation takes over. Now here's why we should consider these questions before we start graphing. One of the strategies that you can use to, to graph a piecewise function is to make a table of values, inputs and outputs. By deciding that there should be two pieces, it tells me I need two tables. The first table is going to be for the top part of this equation. So I'm going to make an x, y table. Now in order to make an x, y table, I need to choose several x values and then plug those into the equation. And I'm going to choose those x values strategically. Since the breaking point of this piecewise function is 2, I'm going to start with x is 2. Now I'd like to note that this first equation says x is less than or equal to 2. So I know that I'm going to put a closed circle, which I like to note by putting a closed dot here, um, to remind myself that this part of the function should have a closed circle at the point where x is 2. It also tells me that since x needs to be less than or equal to 2, I'm going to choose numbers that are less than that to complete the rest of the x values. So numbers that are less than 2 that are easy to plug in would be like 1 and 0. Now I'm going to plug those numbers into this first part of the equation. So I'm going to plug those in and I'm going to get 4, 2, and 0. And again, I'm just plugging them into the 2 times x. So 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 0 is 0. Now the second table that I'm going to make is going to again be an x, y table. And once again, I'm going to start with the value 2 because the second part of this equation applies to all of the x values that are greater than 2. Now a lot of students struggle with this because they think to themselves, well wait, if we can only be greater than 2, then we can't actually use the number 2. And that's a good thinking strategy, but there are numbers very close to 2, like 2.1 or 2.2, that we can use. So what our strategy is going to be to represent we can get close to 2 but not exactly be equal, is that we're going to choose to use the x value of 2. But when we make this graph, we're going to put an open circle there. Now this also tells me that x can be greater than 2 for this equation. So I'm going to choose numbers that are bigger, like 3 and 4. 
And this is again the second table that I'm going to make. Now in order to compute the values for y, I'm going to plug those values, those x values into the second part of this equation. So I'm going to have 4 times 2 is 8, minus 4 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12, minus 4 is 8. 4 times 4 is 16, minus 4 is 12. Now in order to create this graph, what I'm going to do is plot those values. So the first point I'm going to plot is 2 comma 4. And I'm going to put a closed circle there because that is the place where x can be less than or equal to 2. Then I'm going to graph 1 comma 2, 0 comma 0. And based on my experience graphing, I know that the equation 2x should be a straight line. So at this point, I'm going to stop graphing. And I'm just going to use my straight edge to draw a nice straight line like that. Now you'll notice my line stops at the place on the graph where x is 2, which makes sense because that was the breaking point of the function. This line should stop and the next part of the equation should take over. If I look at the next part of the equation, I'm going to start with the point 2 comma 4, which I'm going to put an open circle on. Now when I find the point 2 comma 4, you're going to notice it's already got a closed circle. So if this point had not already been there, I would put an open circle there. But since it's already filled in, that kind of trumps the whole open circle thing. Then I'm going to do 3 comma 8, which is off the graph a little bit. And so since I know that this is going to be a straight line, I'm going to go ahead and graph that straight line like this. So hopefully that's a good review of how we can graph a piecewise function. The second learning target is how do we evaluate a piecewise function? So what we're going to do is we're going to practice evaluating, which means finding a value um, using an equation and also using a graph. So let's say I was asked to evaluate f of 2 using the equation. In order to evaluate f of 2, I need to remember that this means this is the place where x is equal to 2. Now in this piecewise function, just like before, which is the same equation we had up here, there are two parts to this equation depending on which x value you're using. Since this says x is equal to 2, the first thing I'm going to do is look at the domain here and figure out which part of this piecewise function controls x being equal to 2. So, based on the way that this is written, this says x is less than or equal to 2, and this says x is greater than 2. Since we want x to be equal, it tells us use this part of the piecewise function, which means in order to evaluate this, I would just plug the number 2 into this equation. So f of 2 would equal 2 times 2, which is 4. Now, if we wanted to evaluate the same thing, but this time using the graph. If we want to evaluate f of 2 using the graph, we're going to find x equals 2 on the x-axis, which would be right here. Then I would trace that up to where I can find a corresponding point on the graph, and that tells me that the output value would be 4. So I would say that f of 2 equals 4 because that is the y value, the y coordinate, where there's a closed circle on this graph. What we're going to do next is we're going to practice those two skills. So what we're going to do is take five different piecewise function equations and use them to find f of 2. So let's start with the first one. To find f of 2, I'm going to again start with the domain. So figure out which part of this function controls x being equal to 2. In this case, since the first part of the equation says x is less than or equal to 2, I'm going to use that equation, the top part. So I'm going to find f of 2 by plugging the number 2, which means doing 2 times 2, which is 4. Next, I'm going to take for problem number 2 the same approach. So which part of this equation controls x being equal to 2? Since the top part of this equation controls x is less than or equal to 2, I would plug that in and I would have f of 2 equals 2 times 2 which is 4. 
For the third problem, we have a slightly different type of piecewise function equation. So you'll notice there are three parts here. The first part of the domain is x is less than 2. The next part is x is equal to 2. And the last section is x is greater than 2. Since we want x to be equal to 2, it tells me to use this middle part of the piecewise function, which tells me that the output value is 4. Now you'll notice it doesn't say 4x, so we're not plugging anything in. It's just telling me the output is 4. So f of 2 must be equal to 4. In the fourth piecewise function, and again, this is a slightly different equation. All of these five equations are slightly different. We can see for x being equal to 2, we are once again looking at the middle portion of this equation. So f of 2 is equal to 4. And for problem number five, we have a slightly different situation again, which is to say that neither of these parts of the domain include the value x equals 2. The top part of the equation is just for the numbers that are less than 2. The bottom part is for the numbers that are greater than 2, which means that when x is actually equal to 2, it doesn't exist. There isn't a point on the graph where x is equal to 2. So since 2 is not included... in either domain restriction. Therefore, we would say that f of 2 does not exist for this equation. Now, one thing I want to take a step back and look at is that what do we notice about the value of f of 2 for each of these problems? With the exception of problem 5, the value of f of 2 for every single answer is 4. However, if you look at the piecewise functions, none of them are exactly the same. There are some similarities, but none of them are identical. So what we should notice is that f of 2 is equal to 4 for all the piecewise functions except, of course, number 5. But the thing that we should notice is that the equations are not all the same. Now, what I've done here is I've actually graphed these five functions below. So graph number one here refers to the first piecewise function. If you were to graph this, this is what it would look like. Problem number two is graphed here. Number three is graphed here. Four is graphed here. And five is graphed here. What do we notice about all of these graphs near where x equals equal to 2? Well, what I'd like to do to really make sure we see this clearly is I'd like to actually highlight the place where x is equal to 2. So on this graph, x is equal to 2 right here. On this one, it's right here. On this one, it's right here, right here, and on the last one, it's right here. What you should notice is that the closed circle is always at the spot where y is equal to 4, except, of course, in problem number 5. However, the points around that closed circle are very different. For example, this graph connects at that closed circle. This graph is disconnected there. This graph doesn't even touch the closed circle. It's totally like jumping from one place to the other. This one connects everywhere except for in that one spot. These graphs are dramatically different. However, if we just look at the function values, it makes it seem like it's all the same. So what do we notice about the graphs near where x equal to, is equal to 2? Each graph looks different in the area around x equals 2 even though the closed circle and function value is always f of 2 is equal to 4, except in number 5.
Now, here's why we're talking about this. As you can see, evaluating a function for a given x value is not enough information to give us a complete picture of what's happening near that x value on a graph. If we just look at the closed circle, each of these graphs looks the same. But if we expand our view and we look at the area around that closed circle, each of these graphs looks dramatically different. So because of that, and I'm highlighting kind of the area around that point, each one looks very different. Because of that, we need a new mathematical tool to communicate the behavior of a function near an x value. So not just where is the circle, where is the dot on the graph, but what's happening around it. And this new mathematical tool is called a limit. Limits and finding the values of limits are what we are going to spend the entire first unit of our year focused on. Thank you guys so much for watching and taking notes, and I look forward to talking to you soon.